So then what we want to do is we want to start with navigation. So the most important thing in terms of navigation for a Maya user is this little button here, this little tiny one. It's the little Y with a round circle on it. If you're a Maya user, please hit that button. You need to do it every time you load ZBrush. That guy there, that is the gold button that will stop you from going upside down. Now what it is, if we click here, you can just click in the gray anywhere. It's very easy in ZBrush to go diagonally. Now the Maya camera is locked and doesn't have this functionality. So it's gonna get back up and you get back to the right way by sort of holding shift and snapping. And we're gonna get into that later. Just click that on by default. Now your Maya camera is exactly like you're used to having it and you can't go diagonal. There you can, but it, you have to hit a specific hotkey workflow to get that working um, and you won't accidentally go diagonally. So that's very important. The next thing is, we've got everything here in display general, the main display stuff, but the angle of view is very wide. It's sort of quite similar to Maya and you've got like a 35 mil lens. Now angle of view does not match the Maya camera lenses. Angle of view, it's not focal length. So for us, going a longer lens is actually making this a smaller number. And I start with this about 20, 25 down there should be a good angle of view that just gives you a long lens and you should always be modeling with long lenses and I'll get into this in a later class, but that's just a good one. So every time I start a new document, you just do that one, angle of view and everything set up. Before we had to set up a lot more stuff, so this is actually much better in 4R8. Very happy with the changes they've made there. Now that button, if you just hover over it, it is actually a hotkey, so that's Alt-V, so you don't have to search into this every time. Camera of angle of view, Alt-V. So let's see if this works. Just hit Alt V and just tap it. You don't click anything. It's not like Maya's marking menus. Just tap it once and it will sort of hover and then you can click and drag that around. So we'll just roughly put that to 25. Close enough is good enough. I, I'm not too worried about the exact amount of that. So well, now we're ready to start navigating. So let's do this. So I've already said we can click on this guy here and navigate sort of like orbit mode in the gray. But if we click over our model, we're gonna see that we're already in sculpt mode. So you're always in sculpt mode in ZBrush. It's a very simple program in comparison to Maya. You don't have the component modes in the same way. Of course you do because you have a C modeler now, but ZBrush is really made for sculpting. So we're sculpting straight away. That's what we want. One little thing is that it can be very easy for you to hit the T hotkey. Now, if you hit the, the T hotkey, I believe, you can do some weird stuff like this. Okay, this is gonna happen to everybody. And you're like, what? That is weird. And yes, it is weird but it's the way that ZBrush works. Now, what you need to do is you need to be very aware that that T hotkey, you can very easily click that. And now when you click it back on again, you're only gonna have one object here and you see our grids come back, but we've got all this blobby stuff. These are actually a whole bunch of extra objects that we've created. Do not stress too much, just hit Control N. That will clear the scene. So I'm gonna do that again. So we've accidentally hit T and hit Shift just to make sure that's up the right way. So let's do that again. Accidentally I've hit T, I've clicked and I've dragged and I've gone, what is going on? Well, all you have to do is click it back on again, hit control N and then we're back and then hit shift, hold shift to snap it and maybe F twice. So F twice will frame the object and we're good to go. So just remember that little trick. That's a, a great one for starters. So now that we've got this up, we've clicked that on. We've got our angle of view, sorry, at 25, we're ready to start navigating. We've learned how to orbit around. We've learned that we click on that and starting to sculpt, but that's a bit annoying. So right click, right click is the way for all navigation in this program. And just on the orbit, by default, we, we do have symmetry on, which is great. But, uh, to take that off, I'm just gonna hit tap X. It's a toggle, so you can put it on and off. And I hold down control here, and this is masking, and just put a little dot in there. Don't worry about masking yet. I just wanna demonstrate something. If we right click, now and navigate, that is putting, we are navigating around that area, okay? We're not navigating around the center of the object and this is just very specific to, to sculpting and in fact, Maya even copies this and has done something similar in the new version. So if I'm around here and I put another marker there, right click, you can see that we are actually now using that as the pivot point. So I just wanna make that really clear. Now, if you wanna pivot around the center of the mass, just click F twice and you have to do it twice. Once is not enough. You're still pivoting around that axis. Hit it again twice. And now we'll be pivoting around the center of your object. So that's how you do like a frame selection in Maya. It is F, but you gotta hit it twice. So just remember that. So the pan is very easy. Just again, it's right click, always right click, but hold down the Alt key. And there we go, we can pan. 
Now the zoom is the weird one, okay? And this is the one that's gonna frustrate my users and it does take a couple of days to put into muscle memory. So just remember you're gonna be throwing the keyboard out the window for a while into brush, but it does click and then it becomes normal. So don't stress. Is it the alt key and the pen is the same one, but now without releasing the, the right click, so hold down the right click, keep that held, just wiggle it. Now let go of the alt key. Now you'll be zooming. Okay, that is the zoom. Okay, that's the zoom mode. And this is all sort of made for Wacom, you know, so you don't need a keyboard and stuff like that. You can actually do it like that. And you've, you've got these weird combinations of doing it with a Wacom. I always, I'm gonna teach this as though you have a keyboard present. So if you don't have one and you're on a tablet, then you're gonna to have to look up as a brush tablet navigation mode. But uh, ZBrush is sort of designed to be a tablet friendly thing. You should be using a tablet too, by the way, just to, a very low priced Intuos small tablet is what I use. So you don't need these hugely expensive, you know, big tablets. You do not need a Cintiq or anything crazy. Uh, you'll be fine. So there you go. I'm just gonna reiterate that. So we've just got F twice, we'll frame on the object. If you right click, you are pivoting off a spot. I'm gonna clear that uh, mask by hitting control and then just dragging a mask that will clear it. And we're just gonna do that again. So around there, now to get that back, of course, we can just hit F twice. To zoom, we hold down Alt and right click and then release the Alt and then we can zoom back. And then to pan, we're just Alt and right click and we're, we're cool. So, you know, have a bit of a practice of that and you should.